Now, uh, we're talking about the OTAs, DC. Week number three, uh, breakdown. We made some rumors about Traven Durrell. Of course, Traven Durrell is playing with the first team yeah. with Drew Brees, and he's kind of cutting up out there. He's showing what he could do as a top receiver, uh, making great plays and catches as well, playing well. Of course, he had a few mistakes, but overall, he's been really impressing a lot of the Saints coaches out there. What, what, what's your information you have on uh, the OTAs week three? Um, there's a lot of information on the OTAs um, from week three. You had uh, Traven Durrell, who's been out there with the first team, um, and he's been doing good, man. He hasn't been dropping any balls. Um, a lot of his speed seems to be back from his LSU days. Uh, the hamstring been holding up. Yep. Um, he's been looking real impressive, so I'm, I'm shedding some tears for my boy Tommy Lee. <laughs> Tommy Lee, Jerry Tom, Lewis. Tommy Lee been looking good, too, and he's definitely putting up a good fight. That's another, uh, I guess, thing that's been going on. So I haven't heard much about Brandon Coleman, so I'm trying to figure out how all that's going to work out. You got Traven Durrell, um, Tommy Lee, Brandon Coleman. It's almost like they're all fighting for this one spot because we got four receivers that are a lot. You're going to give the the, the rookie, uh, Smith, who actually has been looking very good too. It's been a lot of talk about him. Um, he's not dropping a lot of balls. He's making contested catches. Meredith is looking good. Michael Thomas is going out there dominating every day. Um, these are the type of uh, conversations. Then you got an undrafted free agent receiver and Eldrin uh, Massington. He he's also Massington, making yeah. some plays and he's and showing UCLA. some he's showing some flash. But uh, he, he ran uh, he ran a few of his routes against Devontae Harris. <laughs> Uh, well, we got to take that with a grain of salt, then. <laughs> yeah, so I, I don't think that's going to get him to make the team. Um, Anzalone is doing a lot, man. Um, he's really, you know, stepping up. And, I mean, he's he did it last year, so that's not a surprise. We're not really concerned about what he's doing at OTAs because you know what you're going to get with him. But it's uh, when the pass going on, you need to see if he can hit with that shoulder, you know, you can't dip the crown of the helmet now, so you got to make sure you're going to have to hit with that shoulder all the time. Right. And um, make sure he stays healthy. So you got Davenport who's doing this thing. He's still coming along. Uh, he, he's beating Michael Ola. I don't know what that's worth, but he's gotten Not some much. sex <laughs> on him. Ola. And also J. Ron uh, Elliott, I think he's got some work in against him. So, um he made a play on Alvin Kamari where he would attack with him. So he's doing a lot of good stuff. So um, pretty much I say OTAs was going the way you would like. The players that you would expect to look good are um, Marshawn Lattimore got an interception. Um, they had a couple of interceptions in the uh, two-minute drill. It was kind of pissed Drew Brees off. Um, you had Lattimore and, and Chris Banjo. So the defense out is out there making plays as well as the offense. Um, so it's 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 pretty exciting, man. Boston, there's Boston Scott, uh, Scott sightings every once in a while. Um, you, you got a lot going on, but you had uh, Rick Leonard and Jared Griffin. Um, they've missed some time, um, and then you had other guys like Cam Jordan, uh, Trey Hendrickson, Alex Okafor, Brandon Coleman, Deion Yelder, Andres Pete. And Karen Meredith, who haven't really contributed that much this week. But uh, last week, you heard some things from some of these players. So OTAs are panning out pretty nicely. And, I mean, it's OTAs, man. It's non-contact. I know we're all hungry for some football news. We want to know what's going on. But we're not really going to get the the meat and potatoes like you uh, like to say. (laughs) And I'm more of a uh, salad and fruit type of guy. But (laughs) we ain't going to try that. <laughs> you don't get the salad and fruit. Yeah, they don't, it don't match. No. See? <laughs> All right. But um, we ain't going to really get the, the real thickness of it until we get into this mini camp, which is coming up. Hey, I'll tell you what, man. Um, I appreciate the breakdown. We spoke about, like you were talking about, Marshawn Lattimore's production uh, in the OTAs and how he's looked I'm pretty at training smooth. camp, not mini camp. You can't. Right, I get you. Yeah. Right. But uh, you, you take a look at uh, a lot of the talk is then you mentioned Ken Crawley. Um, we know I, we, didn't, I actually didn't mention Kid Crowley. Well, before, let me mention him. But you, you, you died here on the tip of your tongue. Let me talk to Kid, talk about King Crawley and this. Also, they, didn't he, didn't Kid Crawley make a play out the other day? 
Get Kirk Cousins. Nah, Ken Crawley ain't make no plays today. I thought Ken Crawley had some plays he made out there today, did he? Nah. Okay, it seems because I'm saying that we talk about Chris Banjo and, and uh, Marshawn Lattimore. Okay, Marshawn Lattimore. Okay, good. No, no, and uh, Marcus Williams, you know, he, right. he made uh, some plays. Well, yeah. But all that I'm saying about when we get down to meat and potatoes and we talk about the Saints secondary, we got to talk about Ken Crawley. It seems to be the buzzword, the buzz topic uh, that a lot of uh, listeners and commenters seem to talk about with Ken Crawley. Now, of course, we, we talked about him in the prior show. Uh, I made mention of the fact that I think that Patrick Robinson will Patrick ultimately... Patrick Robinson made some plays. I, well, Patrick Robinson's going to make plays but all season But all you, you want pre- Patrick Robinson all, in the slot, long. You want him in the slot. Big Q. That's my only problem with the Ken Crawley I, thing. I, you know what? I'm Patrick saying, Robinson is one of the best slot cornerbacks in the league. Not saying he can't play outside, but you want him in the slot. So who's going to play outside when he in we, the slot? Uh, this might come as a shock to you, DC, but we have other cornerbacks on the <gasps> team. See, it ain't so. Oh, yeah, we got plenty of So Ken Crawley goes guys. from being number two all the way to the fifth guy? No, I didn't <laughs> in say In your that. projection? No, I didn't say he becomes <laughs> P.J. Williams. Okay. All I'm saying at the end of the day is that you have other cornerbacks that have to, you don't show that way here, you know. So you gonna have a lot of cornerbacks that gonna that you're gonna see a lot from. You. Some of these guys gonna actually surprise you. Well, I I, I know you're hinting at uh, Nicole Jones, and I think he's gonna be a hell of a cornerback, maybe even safety. Um, they're saying he's undersized. He's, he's like six foot. I don't know. How he can't be I don't know. Somebody took him was five foot ten. I wonder who that was. I don't. Know. But uh, anyway, moving on. <laughs> I ain't know he got measured with shoes on, y'all. But <laughs> no, they, 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 they play on barefoot out there. They, they play barefooted every Sunday. DC, you ain't know. He was five ten at the combine. <laughs> he grew two inches in OTAs. Whatever. Sure you so you know we gotta go pay some bills. You know what we gotta do. So, so it's DC with Big Q from Sportscom, and we see y'all on the other side of the bridge. Uh.